and welcome to OMG Extra, your extra dose of MotoGP with former Grand Prix rider and British champion Keith Ewan and myself, Amy Reynolds. It's finally race week again, but just ahead of the paddock arriving in Austin, Texas, there was some interesting news that dropped. More of that in a mo. But firstly, just a quick mention, you can find more information on our YouTube and Patreon memberships in the links below. Your support means we can keep this show on the road. And for our Patreon members, there's an exclusive interview that Keith did with Cal Crutchlow. Keith, was it a good chat? Brilliant. Cal Crutchlow. Yeah. I've known Cal since he was 16. He has an interesting life. He's been a brilliant motorcycle racer. He's a brilliant tester. His dad fits into it very, very well. I, I, I think anyone of a certain age wants to be like Deck, his dad. We cover all of that. We talk about all of that. Um He's always got great opinions, Cal, as well. He's down to earth. He's funny. He doesn't mince his words. He's, he's out there with it. And uh, for a, an exclusive, go to Patreon. But he will be out, of course, later on the site anyway. But um, Cal, and uh, and I touched on uh, whether he'd be coming to the British Grand Prix as well. So you can uh, check that out. Cool. Look forward to it. Well, ahead of this race, uh, we obviously had some interesting and, and fairly big news because it has a knock-on domino effect, really, to the rest of the paddock. But Fabio Quartararo has surprisingly re-signed with Yamaha for a further two years. Keith, how did you take it? Well, is it a surprise? At the end of the day, where else could he really go? And, and when you hear from Cal Crusher, we touch on this subject quite a lot. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that Yamaha have made a commitment. They've made a financial commitment. They've kept a world champion, a superstar rider on board, which for me kind of underlines where Yamaha are at. I was worried, I mean, for, for some time, whether Yamaha might even consider going the Suzuki route and pulling out altogether. You've either got to be all in or nothing, in my opinion. Um, and they've obviously gone all in. You know, Cal is booked for another two years as a test rider. Um, Quattararo is on board. Yamaha are obviously, they're nailing their, their, their future to the mast and it looks like they're going to come up with something. Whether it goes to V4 or whether they stick with the inline four, we don't know. Don't forget the big rule changes come in 27. They will know exactly what they're going to do to um, when they go down the 850cc route. So Yamaha have committed themselves. And I tell you what, the world is a better place for it. But it was rumoured he was actually offered a ride with Aprilia, which is arguably the more competitive package right now. It was a, a bit more of a lowball offer. So that is apparently why he did resign with Yamaha. He, he could have done a Mark Marquez. He could have done, um, but I think 12 million euros to stay with a firm such as Yamaha, uh, you know, Yamaha may be on the upslope. You know, we might be in a situation, we don't know what they've been banging away at in the factory over the last um, 12 months. You know, Cal, you know, has got more autonomy regarding his input into it at the moment. He he talks about that with us. Uh, I, I think that Quattararo, there will have been some due diligence done by him and his management. They, he would have expected some kind of underwriting by Yamaha and, and some kind of commitment engineering wise and the like behind the scenes that we don't know about that convinced him to make that sign uh, signature on on the Yamaha contract and I'm actually really 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 pleased because you know a, a MotoGP without a Yamaha in it just isn't in my view something that any of us should look forward to and, we and meant- the concessions are going to really help them as well don't forget yeah, gonna, he's, he's, he's going to be doing three wildcard rides at the moment but he's he's got up to six wildcard rides uh, anybody has now if you've got concessions if you're Honda or Yamaha um, you can do it you've got extra motors you've got extra tires to test with which is something that held back any kind of testing before Um, so those concessions should really play into we know Honda are big on it let's hope Yamaha then pick up the pace and um, they show us the commitment that they seem to have made to Quattararo I mentioned the the domino effect that big moves like this normally have. And at the moment, everything is speculation, but there are all sorts of names being thrown around at the moment in terms of apparently Aprilia now have offered that seat to Bastianini, but we know that Enea would hope to stay in the factory to Catty team. But there are quite a few names that would like to see themselves in that factory to Catty squad, obviously Jorge Martin being one. But I even read um, a report that Andrea Iannone might be heading back to MotoGP. It's going to be a really exciting year, I think, 2025. Yeah, I think we should stick, uh, stick to the known knows rather than the um, unknown knowns. Um, it seems, yeah, Andrea Iannone, I, I, I can't see it personally. Um, I think there are too many people in the pipeline already for factory rides. I can't see him coming back. He's too much of a, a loose cannon. 
Um, why would they at the end of the day? You know, uh, I think Morbidelli is the one that's in, in the vulnerable position at the moment. You've got Fermin Aldeguer who's, who's coming on strong. Um, I, I think interesting for, that came pre-Cota, Circuit of the Americas, is the comments by Mark Marquez regarding the 2027 rules. He stuck his oar in the water, hasn't he, with the you know less aero, ride heights, more manual, rider control. He's really he's really banged the drum. Casey Stoner will be cheering from Australia for that, for sure, because he's a man that hated all that electronic control and all the rest of it. I don't know what he makes of, of everything that's out there hanging on the bikes nowadays. And that was another thing that Cal Crusso said. The complications compared with when he started in MotoGP are huge. He said, you forget to switch half this gear on. You know, you're backwards and forwards flicking buttons and, and waiting for things to come in and God knows what. He said, it's really, really, really tricky. Mind you, he is 38 years old now. <laughs> Do you know what? Before you said that, I was going to say, the last time I saw, you know, like it is essentially like a dashboard, I just couldn't believe, even in the, sh- well, like, you know, it- relatively short time that I've been in the paddock for eight years, how much it had changed? Well, maybe that's what persuaded Liberty to get involved. It looks like a uh, Formula One steering wheel. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> right, well, me- <laughs> I, I think a lot of that stuff is going to be junked come 2027. And uh, it seems like there's a fair bit of momentum from riders as well that, that, that they've had enough of it all too. So let's get back to basics or a bit more like basics and uh, get some proper motorbike racing going on. And I think we're going to have some at Cota. I mean, are, are we going to see that man, Mark Marquez? Yeah, you know, he was... The man, wasn't he, around the circuit of the Americas? And we got track house for the first time racing at a home Grand Prix. Um, they raced there two weeks ago at Cota in NASCAR. And there was a NASCAR race there two weeks ago, and track house are racing there. And the same weekend, track house are racing up the road in Texas. They've got there's a at the Texas um, Speedway. There's a there's a NASCAR race as well. So they're pretty thinly spread. I should think old Justin Marks is going to be all over the place, backwards and forwards, flying between the the two big events. Well, there's going to be a demo, apparently, of uh, the track house NASCAR car this weekend. So how does that work? But anyway, <laughs> not this very, weekend not, is not, the... Well, I think it's an advertising... It's a typical American thing, isn't it? Let's 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 go big with, with well, the big PR job. And I, I would think that when it goes through that massive, the biggest American flag you've ever seen off the top of the tower, and the Nicky Hayden Hill at Term 14, I mean, the hairs are standing up on end on my hands as it is at the minute, bloody thinking about it. You, you know, it's... It's a big deal. America is on its way. Liberty own the own the thing now. Trackouts are involved in it. You know, Dan Rosamondo is the commercial uh, man at uh, Dorna. You know, there's there's a lot of American influence coming in here. So so perhaps we are on the way back when it comes to uh, American greatness in MotoGP. Well, before we then dig into this weekend and permutations and things like that, Keith, um, do you think? that with the Liberty takeover, we will see more American races back on the calendar. My first year, we we just, I think I'd squeezed in one uh, one year at Indianapolis and, and and then it was off. Well, for me, I mean, we're at the wrong tracks half the time anyway. We need to be at Laguna Seca. Um, but of yeah. course, because it's the place it is, the, the local council, local authorities won't let us dig out, you know, a little bit more safety areas and so on and so forth. So we'll never go back to Laguna, which is a terrible, terrible, terrible shame. Um, right part of the world, wonderful racetrack, would make a fantastic Moa GP, but we can't go there because they won't let us move a few banks and the like. I'm sure there are a few tree uggers out there that um, probably agree with that, but I'm not one of them. Um, so I, I think there will be a resurgence in America. There's got to be a resurgence in America. Liberty are, are, are the kind of firm that are going to be promoting our sport in America. Um, we seem to have gone east a fair way, don't we? Because that's where motorcycle sales and the like are. We need an easier thailand you know japan obviously uh, and so on now it looks like if we go a bit more west you know probably we will have more american races better american races better supported american races and and the one i'm really looking forward to is the baggers we've got for the first time on the motor gp calendar we've got the baggers the indian versus harley davidson they call them baggers because of the baggage that's actually on the great big heavy on monster thing 280 odd kilos um the baggers series is a road bike basically a massive great thing and the racing is superb if you've seen some of the jeremy mcwilliams clips sideways on and doing what he's doing on it um the northern irishman he's i don't know whether he's racing at kota hopefully he is because he's pretty good around there i've seen him win harley races um in america before um fact is we've got a baggers race on the card that's going to go down really well I feel like we're on repeat a little bit because we say every single weekend, this is the race you want to go to. It's got a bit of everything. The atmosphere is great. and But genuinely, 
it is a Austin's a great one, isn't it? Like, it, and again, the nightlife's great. You can go down to Rainy Street. We've got all the bungalows that have been converted into bars, like these kind of like pop up bars. There's the music. There's is it Sixth Street where you've got Maybe. like Pete's Piano Bar. Yeah, Pete's Many Dueling Piano you... Bar. <laughs> I always remember <laughs> oh, J- JT, James Toseland being forced because he doesn't he doesn't like to kind of show off James, even though he is bloody good at it. Um, he, he, that we we paid money to get him up on the stage. He really didn't want to go up on the stage to duel with the dueling pianos. And he absolutely slayed them. I mean, he, he was, smashed it, didn't he? he? I remember that year. Were you in there? Were you in there as well? That yeah. Year? I mean, the trouble is... That was the year I came back with none of my own clothes. For some reason, I must have done like a clothes swap with somebody and I had a Pete's Piano t-shirt on and then somebody else's um, shorts. That it was a great night. JT was, was I, I phenomenal. Can't imagine, I can't imagine why I never noticed that. Uh, I think <laughs> one of the things that I did notice was Colin Edwards in the front row, completely out of his face with the wife when JT got up there as well. It might have been another bit of pressure for JT with uh, Colin heckling him from the side. It was a fantastic, they're always fantastic nights. But yeah. the reality is, having taken all of that, if you go one block removed, you have got a whole street that parallels with 6th Street, which is the posh street in the town, um, with homeless people. I mean, it is America is such yeah. a contradiction in so many terms and, and 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 it is you just go one street that's all it takes and there are hundreds and hundreds of homeless people that are in austin as well which looks like an affluent area um it is wonderful from our point of view and from a sports point of view it's great fun as well but uh, sometimes there's a side to it that just gets your attention and that's one that always gets mine well let's knuckle down and talk about the racing you mentioned that there is obviously a real opportunity this year for mark marquez to regret regain his crown as the king of Cosa. He hasn't had a win there for the last two. But <laughs> like you said, there's quite a few other names that you kind of throw in there this weekend. Yeah, there really are. I mean, it's it's a, it's a racetrack that, that, and it depends on the condition of the racetrack. Is it dirty? Have they have they diamond cut it again? They're always cutting the surface off of it. It's going to be that thin. It's going to be like some kind of ham. Um, uh, yeah, it depends what kind of state the track's in as well when they all get there. Um, weather-wise, it's looking okay. Uh I wouldn't want to make a bet. I, in fact, I refuse <laughs> to make a bet because it just it, there is it is going to be so close this week. Um, Acosta, I just you know he is really the new Mark Marquez, both personality wise and and well, in fact, he's even funnier than Mark Marquez. Thinking about it, he's already got ahead of Mark Marquez personality wise. But but from a riding point of view, he's already had a podium in his second Grand Prix. Can he actually go any? Can he actually win one? Can he actually do I it? I think so. I do. Can he do it, though, this weekend in the Americas? Because that would be the place to do it. Liberty have taken over. He'd be like the new poster boy straight off for the rest of the 24 year. And also, you've got to mention Alex Rins. He's got a little bit of a special something around there. Obviously, with Mark, we always said it was a left-handed circuit. It was just like his speciality wraps up. But Rins has had two wins there on two different bikes. He won last year on the Honda and only his third race. There's an argument to be said that you could, even though obviously it's not really kind of like been shown in, in the first two, it wouldn't have been shown in the first two with Honda. I can't remember actually, to be completely honest, what he did in the first two races with the Honda. But Alex Rins is definitely a name that you've got to put in the mix as well. I think you've got to put it in there just because of history, but no chance. <laughs> Do you think? Oh, okay. I know. Oh. Do you really think absolutely no chance? I just, I can't really see it. I mean, I'd, I, do you know what? I would love the slamming that I'm about to get in our next show if he goes and does the business and I'd be happy to take it on the nose. Um, but no, I can't. I can't see it with the competition as it is at the moment and the speed of some of them bikes at the moment. I can't see Alex Rins. Um, even with the fact that some, he's got something magic at the Circuit of the Americas, clearly. Um, and as yeah. you say, you know, he's, he's done it before. I just can't see it on the Honda. I just can't. Sorry. We'll see. You might be eating your words on Monday. I hope so. I won't hold you to it. I, I hope so. You can rub my nose um, with it. <laughs> and obviously, we've also got to talk about Anaya. I think anaya has got a bit of a point to prove in this season overall. He's had a pretty good crack at it in the first two as well. Um, he won a couple of years ago as well. So I think you've got to, you've got to put Anaya there. You're looking a little bit pensive that. Again, you're not perhaps not going it's, to agree well, with me. On I mean, this yes, one. you have. Of course, you have. Anaya Bastianini is is someone that's yeah, you know, he hasn't rolled over. <laughs> We've had two rounds so far. You know he's going to be back at it. Um, 
But I just, it's so difficult to call now. I feel like we have this this conversation, you know, almost too often in, in that, you know, it, it, it is going to be a difficult one to predict. I mean, and with, performance yeah you know, it's almost psychological it's who really it's not just about who needs it the most because they all do they all are going to be at it but it's just somebody like you mentioned rins who comes up with something special marquez before him they come up with something special on some tracks you know maybe it will be an a's turn this weekend but i don't know i've, I've i'm going with the flow and costa is is the kid for me at the minute i mean i just think that he's on a roll <laughs> when has he not been um and and I I just think that he's going to be out to absolutely nail down, you know, any thoughts that that was a flash in the pan being on the podium last time out. Okay, go on, go for it then, Keith. Give us your predictions. Should we do sprint race first? Oh, blimey! Why well, Martin needs to be back at the front? So I'm going to I'm going to sprint race expert. It always seems to work for him. Um, so I'm going to have a Why Martin in there. Uh, Mark Marquez, Pekka Benaya. Okay. And the main race? Hmm. Tricky one. Pekko, Audigier, Marquez. Oh, not Audigier. Sorry. One I was going to say, Acosta. Audigier. Acosta. Sorry. There we go. Acosta. Um, okay. So apart from, I don't know why, but I've not put Pekko in any of them. Well, that's okay. That's okay, them. so sp- sprint race, I went for Acosta, Marquez, and Anea. Wow. Now, when you mentioned Jorge Marti- um, Martin, now I'm wondering whether I should have put Jorge Martin in my sprint race. But I did put him in my main race, so I did Marquez, Martin, and Acosta. And everyone else, you can tell us what you think in the comments yeah, below. Yeah, please do. <laughs> please do. Also, you can actually send us a voice note now to omgmotogp at gmail.com with your thoughts, comments, questions, and any particularly good ones we can read out. Um, But yeah, if you completely disagree with us, do tell us. I'm sure loads of people will. And don't forget to like and subscribe. If you subscribe, then you get a notice straight away when uh, when the new editions drop, new episodes drop. And of course, with Cal Crasso coming up, um, you want to listen to that one. He was he was a cool kid. Um, so if you even if you don't subscribe to Patreon, which we obviously would like you to, um, if you don't, but you want to know when it comes out, um, subscribe, and then it will pop up on your machine in time for you to catch up with it. It's a good one. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to having a listen on that one, Keith, but you and I will be back on Monday to review the race. It's going to be an absolute banger. That is for sure. But as always, Keith, an absolute pleasure and uh, look forward to catching up with you on Monday. I hope you're wrong about Rins. See you Monday. See you Monday.